My trailer begins in medias res, however it uses Todorov's narrative theory to structure the trailer. I use narrative conventions by including the exposition at the beginning of my trailer to inform audiences what has happened to give them a reason to like the protagonist. I used warm filters and a white vignette effect during the exposition scene, whilst the equilibrium is apparent through dissolves and slow paced editing towards the beginning of the trailer. My trailer also uses the narrative convention of focusing the trailer around the problem stage, using jump cuts to connote the moments of disequilibrium. The non diegetic narration is juxtaposed with discontinuity editing throughout the trailer to entice audiences. However, I challenge narrative conventions by including the new equilibrium stage where the protagonist finds out the truth, her aim, during the car scene. This is unusual as it can spoil the ending. Nevertheless, there are subtle undertones of duality in my trailer which intrigues audiences without spoiling the narrative. The incentive for audiences to watch the film is to find out what happens in the events leading up to the resolution as opposed to the resolution itself. This is similar to Christopher Nolan's Memento in 2000 starring Guy Pearce as Leonard. In the Memento trailer, Nolan subtly alludes to Leonard being the killer through the fragmented narration and diegetic dialogue and through the fight scenes with extras shown towards the beginning of the trailer, showing his violent tendencies and inferring that he is the protagonist and antagonist. My print media takes place in the problem stage which shows how my media product uses conventions of real media products such as Dan Gilroy's Nightcrawler, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, Vincenzo Natale's Cube, and Gaspar Noe's Irreversible. This is evident in the magazine where the central image depicts a medium close-up of Emma Hader as the antagonist, similar to Tyler Durden in Fight Club's magazine front cover. Since my protagonist and antagonist are one of the same, I use the mise-en-scene to connote the antagonistic qualities in the magazine front cover, focusing on red tones which connotes violence and danger. My poster's central image is also taken from the problem stage of the narrative to intrigue the target demographic. I developed the conventions found in psychological thriller posters as I applied some conventions from horror films where the antagonist is positioned in the centre of the poster in a long shot, focusing on shadows and muted colours to make it clear to the audience that the main character is both the protagonist and antagonist, showing her dual personality. In my cross-media package, I use genre conventions in all three products. My main character has psychological issues shown through the close up props of narcotics in the trailer. I use the prop mirror which conveys duality and mental illness. I also use genre conventions through the setting to connote the protagonist isolation. Emma is represented as an outsider, alienated from society, shown in the trailer through the shot reverse shot sequence where bystanders avoid eye contact. I use genre conventions shown through the plot where the protagonist is unaware of a way to escape shown through the medium close-up where Emma is crying as she is struggling to attempt to repair the situation, showing her psychological vulnerability. I use the theme of man versus society as the protagonist is failed by the mental health care system as she calls her doctor and he ensures her through diegetic dialogue that she is perfectly normal. In my poster I use the isolated location and use a blue colour wash to connote the psychological thriller genre. My magazine challenges genre conventions by using red, white, black tricolour scheme which is synonymous with horror films. Across all three products I challenge genre conventions by starring a female as the lead actor. Conventionally psychological thrillers focus on a male protagonist, however casting a woman subverts the genre. This is similar to Amy Dunn who is the antagonist in Gone Girl. When constructing my poster I used many institutional conventions to denote to the viewer that they were looking at a poster. Some of these conventions include placing the billing block and release date at the bottom of the poster and the institutional information beneath the title, conforming to the same format whilst the review was at the top of the poster. When producing my magazine, I used the institutional conventions of the magazine I was emulating, Little White Lies. I included the masthead, the film title and a graphic of my main character. However, I challenged conventions that stereotypical magazines follow in industry. I did not include the date of the release of Boost or any additional story. This minimalistic style fits with the aesthetic of Little White Lies issues. My trailer uses institutional conventions by placing the institutional card towards the beginning of the trailer. I also inserted captions of the review for my magazine using the institutional conventions. My cross-media package challenges representation conventions by having a female antagonist. This is evident in the trailer in the over-the-shoulder shot where Emma's alter ego talks directly to herself in the mirror. It is also shown by representing her as the antagonist in the poster and in the magazine 
through her red lipstick which connotes danger. In the trailer, this is shown through discontinuity editing by using jump cuts and the hyperlapse radial shots. Simultaneously, I use representation conventions by portraying Emma as a victim in the trailer, shown through her facial expressions where she cries in the bathroom. She is represented as a vulnerable through her isolation which is observable in the hyperlapse sequences in the park. I challenge conventions of the male powerful antagonist by representing Gavin as a victim in the trailer which alludes to his death. As part of my cross media package, there's a colourblind casting disclaimer since I cast people who are easy to film. However, it is also conventional for the lead role in psychological thrillers to be white. I use people who are in their 30s which is conventional in my genre. Their age is shown through the long shot where she goes into a house as it connotes that she can afford to own a home property in a nice rural area showing her middle class socio-economic Group. This is also present through the dialect head in the diegetic dialogue and non diegetic narration in the trailer, where middle class accents can be heard by Emma Hader, Kevin Caballo, and Dr. Bateman, as opposed to the working class Mancunian accent that is native to the region. I use cinematography conventions in my poster by using a long shot and framing the protagonist in the centre of the frame. This is the standard shot type used in posters as it uses symmetry, automatically drawing the audience to look at the poster. This is like the Donnie Darko poster where the rabbit mouse is the center of the frame. My magazine uses the cinematography convention of using a medium close-up as the shot type for the central image. The subject uses direct address by looking directly at the camera to encourage the target audience to read the article. In the trailer, I use a variety of shot types, including point of view shots and over the shoulder shots. Using creative shot types like these help break up the standard shot types I've also used, including long shots, medium close up, and close ups, to make the trailer more appealing to audiences. In the trailer and poster, typography is sans serif using the conventions of the modern psychological thriller. I use the font Blair MD ITC 2, the title and the caption, and in the bottom of the poster. I use the aerial typeface for the quoted review at the top of the poster, which is also shown in the caption in the trailer following typography conventions. The magazine challenges sans serif conventions by using the Korean new font, a serif typeface for the integrated text background. I also challenge conventions since I only include a masthead and text in the background. This is an unusual way of presenting typography in magazines, however it follows the conventions of the institution Little White Lies. I use editing conventions whilst editing my trailer using cuts as examples of continuity editing throughout the trailer. At the start it uses soft edits such as fades, dissolves and cuts in slow pace and slowly increases in pace throughout the trailer. I challenge editing conventions by using discontinuity editing including jump cuts during the walking scenes instead of a montage that is conventionally used in thriller trailers to build tension. This makes the audience alert and informs them that something bad is going to happen as the editing has been brought to their attention intentionally. In the street scene I use the convention of an eyeline match cut where I cut the shot reverse shot at the exact moment the character's eyes meet. In my trailer, I use sound conventions such as muffled dialogue in the car scene and bathroom scene where Emma is crying. This is a common sound convention within psychological thrillers and is often juxtaposed with point of view shots or being physically close to the character so the audience is positioned with them. I mainly use parallel sound in my trailer, however I also use contrapuntal sound effects throughout my trailer. I also use stings which is a stereotypical sound convention within the thriller genre. I use the classical non-digetic soundtrack following sound conventions. However, I also developed some convention using two non-diegetic sound effects being looped throughout the entire trailer. A clock ticking sound effect and wind can be heard at low volumes. This subtle sound addition helps to connect the genre whilst increasing the pace when juxtaposed with fast discontinuity editing. I challenge sound conventions by including contrapuntal sound effects in the bathroom scene. This is evident using the non-diegetic sound effect of the train engine juxtaposed with the muffled diegetic sound effect of Emma crying. 